Hey, what's up, guys? How you all doing? It's your boy Shaney G. Today we're going to be reacting to Monsters by James Blunt. I had actually no idea what the song was about, and it's been a long time since I heard James Blunt. We all know you're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's true. I saw your face in a crowded place, and I don't know what to do. Cause I'm so in love with you. So we all know that song, but I've never even heard of Monsters before. But it just came out not too long ago, actually, 2019. It was written by James Blunt for his sixth studio album, Once Upon a Mine. It was released as the fourth single from the album on 1st November 2019. The background to the song is quite intense. James Blunt's father, Charles, himself a kidney donor, was diagnosed with stage 4 chronic kidney disease. Blunt wrote Monsters to express his feelings about his father and his illness, almost as if it's a touching farewell to his father. In an interview with Good Morning Britain, Blunt said, Really, that has been an amazing moment, because when you realise your father's mortality, it's a great opportunity to say the things I'd like to say to him. So I've written a song called Monsters for him. Quite an intense title name, but I guess the monsters are what's killing him. So now... I can relate so heavy to the song because it doesn't actually say it just says chronic kidney disease. So was it cancer? I think it might be cancer. No, it just says a type of kidney disease in which a gradual loss of kidney function occurs over a period of months to years. Initially, generally no symptoms are seen, but later symptoms may include leg swelling, feeling tired, the loss of appetite, confusion, nausea. So this is going to hit close to home. I'm going to tell you the story right now about the greatest man or well, at least he was the greatest man to me that ever lived. Born 1st of March 1959 in Johannesburg, South Africa. He lived a pretty average life, just working, doing what he needed to do. He became a dental technician, fell in love with my mother at quite a young age. They met when my mom was 14, my dad was 18. I think it was pretty much love at first sight, I'm not 100% sure, but they had been together for a very long time. They did break up for a little while. And during that time when they broke up, my mom was in a motorbike accident where she really messed up her knee. And she always says, yeah, it's because she left my father. That's why that happened. But these things just happen in life. Yeah, they had my older brother first. They tried to have another baby. Unfortunately, they had a miscarriage. Well, maybe not unfortunately, but it depends which way you look at it. Because then after that, they had me four years. Well, they tried to have the other child two years later. That didn't happen. Then they had me another two years later, so... I'm four years difference from my older brother. And then, yeah, my parents tried to give us everything we ever wanted growing up. We weren't rich or anything, middle class, kind of. My dad was a dental technician, so he liked to try fix teeth, and he worked for dentists, so he was doing crowns, gold teeth. He was pretty passionate about his job. He first used to work for somebody, then he left and started his own company. My mom helped him there, and they were called m and Dental, which was my mom and dad's name, Marilyn and Ellen. Yeah, life was pretty good. My dad got me into video games when you were young. Yes, I used to love playing video games with him. Um, the first video games he ever bought. Well, we had like a, a NES, but it was family computer, our version. But then the first like, kind of memories I have was a PlayStation 1. <laughs> the first two games was Formula 1, 97 and Tomb Raider 2. I'll never forget that. <laughs> I'm trying to get past Tomb Raider 2. That first level took us so long. And then um, the other third game he bought, I think, was Resident Evil 2, which scared me. But yeah, I remember so many memories just chilling with him, playing video games, having a good time. He would also um, be very supportive of anything that I wanted to do. So I wanted to play drums. So they got me, a, well, my grand bought me the drum kit, but he would drive me almost two hours every week to go for drum lessons by this other guy that was quite far away. And I appreciated that. He would also take me anywhere that I would want to go. If I wanted to go to shows, to go watch bands, he'll take me there. Basically drive all over the country because I used to always be online and meet people from all over South Africa. And then I'll be like, Dad, you know where this place is? And he's like, oh, no, where am I taking you now? And then you'll just take me. You'll come pick me up late at night. This one time I was uh, I was pretty intoxicated and I was in this um, complex that I couldn't get out of. I was like walking around there for hours and it was so huge and it was bad. I was also had a bit of a... Um, the greenies and stuff like that and then, <laughs> I think it took me about two hours to get out of that complex but my, my dad was waiting for me patiently outside and it was like midnight at night and then we had to drive home and then there was an accident on the highway or something and we had to sit there for about two hours in traffic but he just did it sometimes he was a little bit annoyed but 
Yeah, he was a great man. I loved him so much. Then um, he got sick when he was when I was about ten years old. First time was I think a stage one pancreatic cancer. He had to go for operation. They cut his stomach right down here. Uh, took out. I think I don't know. There was a time where they took out his liver. I'm not sure 100 percent of the story. I some of it I try to block out of my mind. You know trauma. And then yeah, they cured that. They did that operation and stuff. Yes, it was hard though because you could never play with him or anything like that because his stomach was always like. Just, you should check that skull was massive and then and then a couple of years went by and they decided to have another child because they were like yeah i mean my older brother are gonna get older they might be alone one day so i was about 10 years old my older brother was 14 and then my younger brother was born and then yeah life was looking pretty good for a while the cancer had gone my dad would always go for checkups and everything like that and then i would say about eight years later when my brother was about eight, my younger brother, just the cancer came back. I want to show how long this actually went on for. I just thought it was going to be like the first time. It wouldn't be anything too bad. My dad went for a few tests, went for a few operations, everything like that. I was like, oh, I was just slow growing cancer and moved from one spot to another. I think it was liver. Then I went to pancreas. They cut out like 90% of his liver, which was pretty intense. Um, he was in ICU for a while. It was so hard to witness this. A lot of the times I didn't even want to go to the hospital because I couldn't just see my dad like that. The person I love the most, I was. Me and my dad were like this. Most people don't have a close bond with their dad, but I love my dad with all my heart. And yeah, then I was just going to be difficult. I think this song is going to be intense. And then, um, yeah, I remember just visiting me at the hospital the one day and then I went up to my dad. I, I, he was in so much pain. A lot of the nights he would be screaming and stuff like that from all the pain. And this was before like weed and stuff was that big. So I would always be smoking like weed when I was younger. And then I would tell them, yeah, they should smoke it. But he wasn't all that. Like my dad was like, he wasn't strict. he would be like, there's a time to party. But then he would also be like, there's a time to play. So he was serious when, when you needed to be serious. But yeah, he also loved Warhammer. <laughs> my dad was cool. <laughs> oh man, I miss him so much. But anyway, you know, I'm just thinking about all these times when I've seen him in the hospital. He also had like um, morphine. And I remember I tried to drink that morphine once because I was so depressed, but that's a story for another day. But yeah, I was suffering tons of depression, seeing all of this stuff happen and being like, wow. But we learned from a young age, I learned that life, we can't live forever. But then, yeah, the one day I was visiting my dad, like, this is going to go back to me being depressed. And then in the hospital, then he was like, yeah, he tried to jump out the window of the hospital because he was in so much pain and he couldn't take it anymore. And that broke my heart. Hey, the last thing he kind of said to me was like, yo, Shane, now I'm like you. Now I'm just trying to like end it all. And I was like, no, dad, we'll be okay, I'm sure. And then I remember just looking in there at the hospital bed and I was like, no, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, that was the last conversation I had with him because when I came back, <laughs> yeah, then they put him in um, hospice. I never ever spoke to him again. At least I gotta say I love you. But um yeah then Yeah, he was in hospice for about a week. My mom was lying there by him all the time. I still was in denial. I was like this is not gonna happen, but I remember sitting on the hospital bed and um just talking to my uncle about what am I gonna do for my future and then my We were talking about me going to the overseas and then my, my dad was like on uh, morphine quite high dose of morphine they were basically slowly trying to um, kill him I guess <sighs> yeah and then he took his last breath there when I was saying that I'll never forget that day my mom and I haven't spoke that time, so I just went to go call my mom. <laughs> and then, yeah, everyone was just there, crying around the bed, I remember that. But yeah, it's been quite a few years now. Like 13 years, I still miss him. I've always wondered, like I tell Celeste, my fiance, what would he be like now? I think he'll be pretty cool. Uh, he was always a cool guy. I would like to know what he would think about the world. He never really got to see Facebook and all that type of stuff, but uh, he was the man. He was the man. Well, that was my story. I'm just going to put that there on the internet. 
It's been a memory of him. I miss you a lot, Alan James Cowell. Oh, I'll hold on to the memories as long as I can. Anyway, this is gonna be Monsters by James Blunt. What a beautiful song. Imagine making something like that for your dad. <laughs> That's that admin from the get go. Uh, 
feels cathartic there. Let's just let it out. Oh man, I miss my dad a lot. Just go to somebody you love and just tell him that you love him and hold him close because you never know. Eh? Life is short. <sighs> Why do we get to know people that fall in love and all that stuff? And then, ah, oh, pain. My mom, after my dad passed away, also just was never the same. But I don't think my family ever was. But wow. I don't think I have much left to say. Thank you guys for listening to the story. And yeah. Much love, peace and happiness. We'll catch you guys on the next one.